Hello everyone and welcome back to a, another review of the monthly numbers for the real world range and efficiency of a Polestar 2. The numbers for October are in and the report has been published on the website at polestardriver.com where you will find the report contains many pages more than what we review here on the YouTube channel. So please visit the, the site and download the report and take a look at it, all the numbers that are there. So what has happened in October? Let's take a look. First of all here we have the progress. So in October we received 113 trips that were logged, which is great. And that represents an amount of 7,000 miles or 11,000 kilometers. Here we have a new page that I've added. So we still have contributions from 10 countries, 92 individual contributors, and we have 1,069 trips logged in total across almost a year coming up uh, in January. Will be a year since anyone other than myself started submitting their trip data. So great effort by everyone. On this page what do we see so it's a quick breakdown showing you the miles per kilowatt hour that you can get so uh, the first block in the top right shows the difference between long range dual motor and long range single motor we have data for both of those second block shows you preheating so uh, what is the difference between yes preheating or no not no preheating Third one shows the difference in wheel size. Fourth one is one pedal driving, off, low or standard. Bottom left is air conditioner on or off. And hopefully from next month we will start receiving the eco version of that also, which is now available on the website. You can select your aircon as on, off or eco if you've got software version 1.7. Uh, road conditions, driving style and bottom right is heat pump. So those of you who are lucky enough to order your car with a heat pump, we will track here whether it is paying off or not. So get your trip submitted, especially if you have heat pump. Here are the submitters for October. Thanks everyone, 10 submitters, 113 entries with uh, over 10,000 kilometers logged in this month. So here's the consumption across all the months of the data that we've submitted. And if you take a look down here in August, uh, so the blue numbers are miles, uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles. The peach colored ones are kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. But looking at the miles, in August to September it went up by 0 0.4 um, the consumption but from September to October it's risen by 1.5 so quite a big jump there and you can see that on the chart where the curve was relatively flat for most of the summer and now it started to take a larger upward curve so let's see how November and December come out in these numbers. I was trying to see through all the numbers what may have caused this uh, larger increase than previous months and the only thing I can spot here is that the average temperature uh, in October was much lower than it was in August or September and we know that temperature has quite an effect on range so that's possibly the cause of the larger kilowatt hours per 100 miles this month. Here we have the same range data but I've split it out between the different cars. So this one here is long range dual motor coming out at 31.5 kilowatt hours per 100 miles in October. Here we have the long range single motor which is coming out at 28.4 kilowatt hours per 100 miles and then standard range single motor we have no data as yet if you have 
a standard range single motor car why don't you send us your trip data and we can get this chart recording the averages across all the months this page here shows us uh, the miles per kilowatt hour or the kilometers per kilowatt hour and in October you can see that the range has dropped so September was 5.5 kilometers per kilowatt hour October is 5.27 and on the miles it's gone from 3.41 to 3.27 so some information drop in there this is the combined number top right you can see the average across all the months so 3.3 is the average across all the data that we have in the system here 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour or 5.2 kilometers per kilowatt hour again this chart has been broken down into the different Polestar 2 models here he has the long range dual motor uh, long range single motor and standard range single motor so again if you have any of the standard range models get your data logged this month we did receive 11 entries for long range single motor cars yeah we have the pdrw so real world range and this is the combined number in october we're looking at 245 miles and that's compared to 256 in september so a drop of 11 miles in one month and that's the equivalent of 395 kilometers top right again is the averages across all the months and you see the average miles is 244 for all the data and 393 kilometers which is slightly above the EPA range but well below the WLTP this is a new page here which shows you the breakdown by Polestar model so you can see here that the long range single motor in October the range was 265 miles or 428 kilometers on the third um, column you can see there the long range dual motor October's number was 243 miles or 392 kilometers real world range this is the same data just uh, shown in graph form and as uh, data submitted for the different months on the standard range and the long range single motors then the graphs will start drawing themselves as the months go by this page here is just a one page summary which will show us the difference between the different Polestar models so on the left hand side we have long range dual motor with 1058 trips logged 71,121 miles and an average range of 244 which is equivalent of 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour for each Polestar model you can see the miles in blue and the kilometers in peach and how many trips were logged for each model so I'm looking forward to seeing how these numbers compare if you take just the 11 trips logged so far for long range single motor their range is around 21 miles more than the dual motor version so let's see how that develops over time here we have the standard range by country so you can go and compare your numbers versus other countries or other users in your own country I should say he has the same data but just in number format this chart here shows us the preheating crossover at miles per kilowatt hour and somewhere around 9 degrees Celsius or 48 degrees Fahrenheit is the point at which you should start preheating so anything below that temperature preheating benefits as you can see along the top line here if it's above 9 degrees or 48 Fahrenheit then 
preheating doesn't seem to make any difference. In fact, the ones that have preheating end up with less consumption than when there was no preheating. Here is a preheating chart so you can compare across all the months. And here we have a new page which I've added which will show those that have heat pump compared to those with no heat pump. And there you can see in October uh, the value on the top line was 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour for those with no heat pump or 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour for those with a heat pump. So we'll watch that develop over time. As usual at the end of the slide pack you will find a slide for each country that has submitted data and you can go through there and compare your numbers to what others are getting. That's all we have for this month. That's the October numbers. As I said, the report on the website contains many more pages than what I've shown you here. So go and take a look and compare your numbers to other numbers from your country, from your pulse or model, or just generally have a look at how you compare in any of the areas. Thank you for being with me today and please do click on the subscribe button and click that notification bell next to that so that you are notified when new numbers become available. And also while you're there, why don't you click on the like button and help us get this video out to more people. Once again, thanks for watching and thank you for your time and all of your trip submissions. I really appreciate it. I will see you again next month when the November numbers will be in.